Alright, so after a um, couple of videos on uh, showing you a demo, I thought to go back and do some theory. Um, so in this video, I'd like to give you an overview of two common circuits when working with industrial sensors and connecting them to a PLC within the industrial automation field. The two circuits that I want to cover today um, are syncing and sourcing and 4 to 20 milliamps current loop circuit. Now, my intention behind this video is to um, help you to understand the difference between them and when to use each. Obviously, it's a long topic. I can make a video on each one separately, but I thought for now I'm just going to give you an overview of the two circuits. In general, there are two types of industrial sensors digital and analog. Now keep in mind there are other types as well. Digital devices produce two possible values as their output, either 0 or 1, low or high. An example is proximity sensor, it's either on or off. Analog sensor on the other hand can produce a continuous number of possible output values. An example is a temperature sensor. It reads, for example, 10 degrees Celsius, 20, up to 500 degrees Celsius, a range of values. So now when connecting sensors to PLC, there are two common main circuits. One for digital sensors, including syncing and sourcing, and one for analog sensors, including 4 to 20 milliamps current loop circuit. Now, there are other methods depending on the sensor type, like for example, heart communication, profit bus, etc. For digital sensors, syncing and sourcing, the terms syncing, NPN, over here, and sourcing, PNP, refer to the direction in which the current flows through the input or output module of a PLC. So here, for example, I have a PLC input module over here. Now a sourcing P and P is when the current flows out of the PLC port. So the port acts as source. And a syncing NPN module is when the current flows into the PLC port, kind of syncs into this module. This is usually mentioned in the documentation when working with different PLCs. So here's an example from Ellen Bradley uh, for Micro 820 PLC. You can see that this is the um, syncing configuration. This is the input syncing configuration over here. Um, and then this one is actually showing the sources sourcing input configuration. So here's another example from Ellen Bradley covering compact logics controllers. And in this document, it's showing here that it has um, a 16 syncing digital input and 16 sourcing digital output. So the side here, the outputs are sourcing and the inputs are syncing. Now the devices that are connected with the PLC IO module are also labeled syncing and or sourcing. When we have a sourcing module, the device connected to it is a syncing device. In syncing NPN devices, current flows into the device from the module. The module provides or sources the current. A syncing NPN device always attaches to a sourcing I.O. module. Now the same thing applies for a syncing module. The device connected to it is a sourcing PNP device. In sourcing devices, the current flows out of the device into the module. The module receives or syncs the current. A sourcing PNP device always attaches to a syncing I.O. module. So simply, like a puzzle, you have two options, either a sourcing that's connected to a syncing and vice versa. You cannot have two sourcing or two syncing parts. Now, while you are um, learning about the topic, syncing and sourcing, you might read the two terms, syncing and sourcing, NPN and PNP. Now, both are used when working with PLC and sensors. 
However, for simplicity, we refer to the PLC I.O. modules as syncing and sourcing and sensors as NPN or PNP sensors. However, both terminologies are correct and you can see them often in documentation. Now I'm going to show you here that when we deal with sensors, um, here are examples from Wingler. Um, so I have retro reflector sensor and if I scroll down, um, it's usually mentioned if this is a PNP or NPN um, versus in um, PLCs, um, in modules and PLC modules, we refer to them as syncing and sourcing. So I'll give you another example from the same company, Wingler, and um, I'm going to scroll down. And this specific sensor um, has uh, adjustable parameters, so it can act as NPN or PNP depending on um, the parameters or the wiring. Here's another example from Ellen Bradley. So this is um, a proximity sensor. And here, if I scroll down, um, you can see that it comes in different types. It comes in as a PNP or NPN. And in the documentation, it's actually showing the wiring diagrams uh, when it's an NPN or PNP. So everything is actually mentioned either in the websites as the specifications or in their documentations. A sourcing and syncing circuits consists of the following parts. Sourcing part, syncing part, and a power supply. Here I want to show you in general how the syncing and sourcing uh, circuit diagrams look like. Here I have um, a sourcing PLC uh, input module that is connected to a syncing NPN device, then to a power supply, and then that power supply is connected back to the sourcing PLC input module. And for this one is I have a syncing PLC input module um, then it's connected to a sourcing PNP device that is connected to um, the positive side of the power supply and the power supply is also connected back to the um, syncing PLC input module. Now for analog sensors, the 4 to 20 milliamps current loop circuits. Example of an analog sensor is a temperature sensor. Now we use 4 to 20 milliamps current loop for analog sensors. To understand the basis of 4 to 20 milliamps concept, let's take the circuit covering Ohm's law, which is one of the fundamental electrical concepts. Now in this circuit, we have a voltage source and three resistors in series representing loads. Now according to Ohm's law, voltage equal current times resistor. So if I would measure the voltage across the first resistor, then the voltage equals current times the value of the first resistor. The same thing for the second resistor. The voltage equals the current times the value of the second resistor. And the same thing applies for the third resistor, meaning there is a voltage drop across each resistor, across each load. However, the current is the same anywhere in the loop. And this is the basis of the industrial 4 to 20 milliamps current loop circuit, that the current values remain constant and don't have a drop or change over long connections like voltage values do current loop in industrial settings has the following components sensor, transmitter, power source, and a receiver. A 4 to 20 milliamps current loop is looking like this. An example is having a temperature sensor, a thermocouple to measure a process temperature, and a transmitter which converts the variable signal from the sensor into current. And the transmitter is actually what regulates the current in the loop. And a power supply is um, the part that provides voltage in the circuit. And there are different ones of power supplies, 36 uh, voltage DC, 24, 15, 
and 12. And the most common one is actually 24 voltage DC. And finally, a receiver uh, that reads the current loop. In this example, I have an analog input uh, module. So basically, the reading gets um, measured here from the thermocouple, and then transmitter converts that to the current, and then finally, we can read that using the PLC analog input. Now, each element in the loop has a voltage drop, but because we're using 4 to 20 milliamps current loop, the current produced by the transmitter is the same throughout the loop. Now, I hope that this video gave you an introduction of um, the differences between, or the main difference between syncing and sourcing uh, circuits and 4 to 20 milliamps current loop. Again, I can cover both topics in details in separate videos, but my intention behind this video is to introduce you to the two circuits and give you a glimpse of the difference between them. So I have a course um, on syncing and sourcing. It's called Input Sensors with PLC, Syncing and Sourcing um, on LinkedIn Learning. It's a short course, but I go through uh, or over the um, details of how to construct a circuit when you have um, sourcing and syncing um, sensors. Um, I'll leave the link in the description box if you want to check it out. And I also have a course um, that's called PLC Industrial Sensors. Um, this one I go through uh, the common industrial sensors that we use in um, industrial automation with PLC. So proximity sensor, temperature sensors, uh, pressure sensors, and level sensors. And I will leave the link um, of this course in the description box as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time.